they give you an indication your third camp, at least with the Steelers. Mm -hmm. They give you an indication where you did something better this time, or, or did, did you feel like you were better than you did? This um, time? I mean, I definitely feel like I've progressed as a long snapper um, the last three years since they saw me. When was that? 2018. Um, going to the XFL, they kind of, when I got released, told me to take those steps and brought me back and just worked with me since then, and I, I feel comfortable now. So. It came out report that you, you, did you go to Coach Tomlin and say, I, I want to play linebacker to give me another shot to do something? I'm out, yeah. Jokingly, I oh, told okay. him, yeah, I told him, hey, if you need, need an extra hat this game, I can jump in for you. So. Did you feel good about your chances going up to it, leading up to the cutdown day? Gonna... Um, I, I, don't, I didn't know. I don't think anyone really knew. It was kind of just. I mean, no one knows what they're thinking in the front office. You just go to work every day and snap the football and do your job. So I just let the cards play how they played out. So. What did the kept you going? Um, I'm not really sure. I just I, I had something on my mind. I wanted to make it to where I'm at now, and um, I just kept working at long snapping and doing what I had to do to, to, to get to this spot. So you don't quite have T.J. McConnell money, but, I mean, right, the second highest paid athlete from Char Valley, I think? Oh, there's a couple guys, uh, the Ventrone brothers, they were in the league. Um, yeah, T, T, T just signed a nice contract. I'm going to lunch with him on Tuesday, so he's he's paying <laughs> for sure. I don't know when. What, uh, when, when you first approached with long snapping, you know, what was your, I guess, first reaction to it, and maybe how did you kind of decide to take to it? Um, I was the backup in college just – just because we, we had a guy and we needed someone to, to be the backup. And um, just af after that, I when I got released from New England, I was on a workout in Green Bay, and they knew I was the backup and did it for like three games at Duquesne. And they asked this, me to snap, and once I did it, they were like, hey, this is what you need to work on the next year, two years, whatever you need to do, and you'll be in the league. So that's kind of how I took it and ran with it. So How much was the coverage part of it? Into making this team um, I don't, I don't think. I think that's just an added bonus. I don't think it really had any effect. I just I, more about snapping, snapping and, and blocking rather than coverage, and that's just an added bonus that I I bring to the table. How old were you when? How old were you when? Or do you remember the game when all of a sudden James Harrison? Yes, against remember, Cleveland. Remember how old you were for that? And, and did you ever think that hey, long snapping, this could be the way to go? Uh, I was, I think I was, I want to say like eight years old, but I do remember the game versus Cleveland and he came in and snapped it over the head. Um, I really never thought about the long snapper position until I started doing it and then you have a real respect for what these guys do and I mean it's, it's a job what's and it's a hard that? job. What's the, what's the, the key to, like when you said you went to Green Bay and you kind of had it and they told you you needed to work on stuff? Just the consistency, like you got to be consistent. It's got to be there every time, the same ball. Um, the second you start throwing a different ball or trying to do something different, um, that's when things start getting shaky. So just the consistency throughout the snap, the blocking, everything. Um, it hasn't really hit me yet, honestly. Like my family's like, you don't seem excited. I mean, obviously I'm excited. I just there's still it's still my job and. Um, I, as quick as I'm, I got on the 53, I could be off the 53. So I'm just taking it every day and going to work and doing what I got to do to get better at my craft. Yeah, my phone's pretty hectic right now. So. Yeah, uh, just the reps. Just keep getting reps. Like today, grabbing. Presley on the side, working the holds, working the snaps, him seeing my rhythm, my motion of snap, um, the ball flight, the rotation, everything. Just just reps, reps after reps. All right, thank you. Thank you. Jameer, Danny Smith said he challenged you a lot throughout the preseason and kind of as it went on, he was more impressed. In what ways did Danny Smith begin to challenge you like a veteran as he described it? Um, just uh, using his technique um, on film consistently, you know, uh, for my, so, for my size, I try to use that to my advantage. I just try to like run into guys and like get them off me. But um, he wants to see a rip and you know uh, 
getting, trying to, instead of like getting blocked and like getting off the block, just like trying to make it to where that guy can't block me, can't even get his hands on me. That way I can get down the field quicker and, and make plays deeper. How do you feel about that performance against the Panthers? I think you had something like three and a half or something in special teams tackles. What, what's kind of your mentality on special teams that makes you so successful? Um, just go, like, see ball, get ball. It's, it's the most fun you can have on the field. It's like playing in the backyard all again, shoot them up, bust them up with all your friends. You know, it's see ball, get ball. And uh, you just use your athleticism, your length, and get to use everything, your speed, your power, everything. And um, I just love it. You had a really interesting journey to get to this point. I know pro day because of COVID. I know that your dad was hospitalized with COVID as well. All right. You, you know, get cut and pasted. And now you're here. What did you learn about yourself through this whole process, this whole journey here? Um, just that I'm a lot stronger than I give myself credit for, you know, um, just staying at it, you know, uh, mentally, uh, it was, it was definitely a lot, like, and there were some times where I didn't know, like, I didn't know what I wanted to do, uh, if I'd ever get another chance, you know, uh, if I'd ever see my dad again, and, um, I just put my faith in God, and, um, I prayed to him a lot, and, um, I just... Focus, stayed at it, stayed at with the football, and um, kept grinding, and yeah, everything fell into place. So is it tough, like last, you might not have, last year's circumstances, no preseason games, for special teams especially, it's kind right. of hard to walk through your cover and punch and not really doing it. Do you think that that, maybe last year, if you had the chance to get it on the film and get enough stadium? Well, I mean, I didn't even get a chance last year to even put on a helmet. Like, I was in Houston for oh, about a week and a half. The first whole week I was quarantined, and then, um, I was there for like three days. We did workouts in the weight room, and then they cut me. So I didn't even get a chance to do anything. <laughs> How much have you learned that, you know, you get TJ here and then Ingram comes in. Right. He's got even more experience. How much have you learned from those guys? Oh, man, the, the knowledge is that those, all three of them, Alex too, all three of them have, it's just, even Cassius, uh, it's just, I couldn't even keep up. You know, they, they're telling me three different things that I, I could have seen on, the, on that one play, and I'm just like, like how? Like how? <laughs> and so, I mean, I'm definitely going to just try to be a sponge in that room as much as I can, try to learn as much as I can from those guys, and um, hopefully get a chance by myself more times, make it plays on special teams to develop and become a good outside linebacker. Did, did that workout at Notre Dame Pro Day that got you signed, how did that kind of go down? Did Kevin Colbert kind of approach you and that's how you got signed, or how did, how did that work? Yeah, as uh, soon, as, soon as I got off the field, uh, Mike T and uh, – uh, Mr. Colbert, they came right over to me and um, they were just basically saying they were going to give me a shot and said, can I be there, uh, be to Pittsburgh by Monday? I said, hell yeah. <laughs> what were the emotions like for you yesterday? Uh, yesterday, it was just like a huge relief, you know, going through the whole day, you know, you're trying to be normal. We have like normal day practice meetings and everything and, and it's so much uncertainty. You don't, you don't know like how things are going to go. But um, I was just sitting at my locker just waiting, waiting till four and um when it hit, I was, it was just like a whole bunch of relief just felt like, yeah, it was, it was real. <laughs> Who's your first phone call? Who was my first phone call? My mom, obviously, yeah. She, she, my mom, she had been calling me like all throughout the day, like I was just at, at home or something. I'm like, mom, I'm in meetings, like, like what are you doing? <laughs> She's she's a she's a character. I don't know. You guys will probably get a chance to interact with her. <laughs> Were you told you made the team, or did you look at the clock and say, okay, it's past? Yeah, it's just like a thing where like you just if you don't get a call, it's then you're on the team. Like yeah, yeah, player. yeah, pretty much. You know, co coaches and front office guys always say not to play the numbers game, like not to think about it. But when you're in your position, you have to think about it, right? I mean, and and, and yet at the same time, you might have a job right now at the expense of somebody that you've become close to. What's that dynamic? Like? Right, definitely. Um, I mean, you definitely. I'm not gonna lie and say you don't get those thoughts, but um, you definitely gotta suppress them the best you can and just like um, get. I mean, you come every day and just like prove why you should be here. Like that's that's the mentality you have. Just prove why like you can't get rid of me. Like that's the mentality I take every day. And um, even even today, like making the 53, that that doesn't mean that in two weeks I'm still gonna be here. So I'm. I, I still have to prove each and every day that I'm, I'm worthy of this chance and I'm worthy of being one of the 53 that get to be on the roster. Your brother was here last year. Right. A bit, even you were here, I think, for, for the summer maybe or spring. Yeah, yeah. So you, did, you weren't of any team who practiced like last year. What's the dynamic talking to your brother about being here and then you're, you're here with him? And now he's Say it again. You just the dynamic with your brother and where he's at now. He's kind of where you were last year. Oh. Oh. Um, well, I mean, it's unfortunate what, what he's having to go through right now, but um, 
you know, he's he's always supportive of me and I'm always supportive of him. And like we have that good relationship where like we uh, feed off one another and of, uh, you know, being four years apart and um, me growing up and him being like the, the oldest in the household for most of the time I was a child. Um, it's just a great relationship that we have uh, coming up together. I've been able to follow his footsteps and um, through Notre Dame, Aquinas and now here, which is crazy. And um, I just think that everything happens for a reason. Um, I can't wait for him to make his return, and um, I'm excited. Yeah. Talk about a little bit what you learned last year. You went against guys like Liam Eikenberg, Robert Hainsey, and then you also have Julian O'Hora, Dalen Hayes, more, Aiden Moore in that edge room as well. I mean, how being around such an NFL talent every day, both on the offensive line and on the defensive end of your room, meetings, how did that help you? Uh, tremendously. Um, you know, my junior year, I made the switch to uh, defensive end. I had no moves. Like, literally, I was just run up field and try to get around them. And, um, you know, those guys, they sat me down. They, they taught me how to watch film. You know, um, they taught me how to rush the passer consistently and effectively. Uh, taught me how to, like, read what the tackle is giving me, what kind of set he's giving me. I had no idea about any of that kind of stuff. And um, it's just... It was just uh, even the older guys, you know, uh, Romeo, he's he's also been a great help for me. Um, and they just they just continue to feed me knowledge. Even Coach Elston, he was a great part of the reason why I'm here today as well.